The Imagine Institute is a very special institute in that it has an extremely close relationship between the clinician and the researchers. So you have common approaches, common uh, issues. However, you have people working on the brain, the heart, the skin, the gut. Uh, and in this way, uh, there's really integrated research looking at the human as a whole instead of being focused only on one organ. At the Institute, we discovered more than 200 genes. We have done more than 25,000 uh, sequences. And for more than uh, 3,000 cases, uh, we have uh, established either clinical or preclinical assays that help uh, transform the life of the patients. Uh, we are really working on going from uh, discovery to implementation of new therapies. The identification of the gene responsible for a genetic disease is the first step. The second is to recognize the pathophysiology that go to the pathological variant, to the clinical and biological sign, and then to see which strategies we can use to solve the problem caused by this pathological variant. I worked specifically on the causes of severe viral diseases. So the COVID pandemic happened and we studied patients, either pediatric or adults, who had very severe disease who were in the intensive care unit. And we identified in a small group, rare genetic defects uh, blocking the type 1 interferon induction or response and leading to severe uh, viral disease. We found a high prevalence of autoantibodies against type 1 interferons. And so this is an autoimmune attack against the own immune system, which is sort of counterintuitive, but it's probably the cause of uh, millions of deaths because of COVID worldwide. So in my own research, it's called single cell technology or single cell sequencing. The idea is to look at gene expression, but cell per cell. So now we have a resolution of one cell, whereas before, we were checking gene expression between patients and health individuals. Uh, we, that was 100 million cells versus 100 million cells. Now we can resume really per cell. My project is about the interaction that we can have between the environment, our genetic of everyone, everyone genetics, and also uh, our immune system, how it's stimulated, and our diet, basically. So the, the, the goal here will really be to be uh, how the environment can influence your immune system, your immune response, and that uh, linked to also your genetic, what, whatever you have in your, in your DNA that can influence your immune response based on the environment you are living in. Currently, my lab is focusing on developing gene therapy approaches for patients with dermatological diseases. Uh, and these, uh, I think they are very successful. Uh, however, they are very complex and very, um, and very expensive. So now the goal of my lab is to develop a new technology that could be less expensive and more efficacious. For example, if we have a vector that can cure sickle cell disease, if you develop a vector that is 10 times more potent, this means that uh, with a smaller amount of of the vector we can treat a patient, which means that with the same amount of vector, instead of treating one patient, we treat 10 times more patient. We work, uh, for example, to predict the outcomes of the disease, to be able to stratify a disease into several aspects. We have a method to predict when the patient will have uh, kidney disease and when the patient will have kidney failure and then we will choose uh, uh, time aspects when we will provide uh, treatment to the patient. So we have access to the real data with the real patients and to all the data discovered by the, by the researchers. We have now one million patients with all the reports of the patients. We can reuse all this data uh, with a PHP to be able to find the new, new diagnosis for the patient, uh, undiagnosed patients that came 10 years ago without the, the gene was not known at this time and now we, we know the gene and we can find this patient. The research uh, for the next 5-10 years will be devoted to see how we can modify organ or cells 
into the patient to obtain their definitive cure by in vivo injection of the more creative tools of molecular biology we have now. I envision that maybe within five years, uh, for example, what we do in research now, there, there will be a children coming at Necker Hospital. These children would see clinicians, would have a classical diagnostic, clinical, genetics, but in parallel, for its, its diagnosis, it would go through a molecular single cell pipeline, and we would be totally integrating the results of the molecular single cell approach to what already exists in clinics and genetics. Finally, uh, I would really like to insist on the fact that rare diseases not only will help us understand more all the non-coding genome, but actually can inform us about the pathways that are involved in common disorders. And so we also need to uh, strengthen the collaboration between people working on rare diseases and common diseases. Thanks for watching, but now an important disclaimer. The content of this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Viewers should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice for any medical condition they may have and should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions.